Hello everyone, this is Dr. E and today I'm going to share with you how I teach my students the imaginary numbers so that they will be prepared when they uh, start working on complex numbers in algebra. Most of our students are just going through the motions that every time they take the square root of a negative numbers, they should put an I in their answer so that they will get the full credit in a quiz or homework without real, really realizing why there is an imaginary number or why is it that the square root of a negative number does not exist. And that is what I'm going to be sharing with you in our uh, discussion for today. So for the students who are watching our videos on complex numbers and imaginary numbers, practice exercises are in the description box down below. And for the teachers, you can share this video and you can use all these contents for your class, whether it's online or in face-to-face. -face. So the first thing that I always make sure that my students are understanding and my students are mastering would be the value of uh, remembering or memorizing their multiplication table, especially on simplifying square roots. So I always tell them that there are two square roots in algebra. This is just my terminologies in my class, a language that I use in my classroom. There will be a regular square roots and irregular square roots. And regular square roots are square roots of numbers who are perfect squares, like square root of 81, square root of 100, square root of... Uh, 64 because all of those square roots will return a positive integer. But when we have square root of 12, square root of 50, square root of 20, we know that we can factor out those numbers so we can produce a factor that is perfect squares that we can simplify in terms of a square root of a regular number. So those are the two types of square roots that I always show my students so that they will master and... Uh, have their uh, skill in mental math, especially in simplifying square roots, in their head when we go through problems involving complex numbers. And the next thing that I show them would be why the square root of a negative number will return an I or does not exist. So I need to make sure that my students are understanding why we put an I in square root of negative four and it becomes 2i and not 2. And uh, it's important that they uh, understand why they need to place that little i as opposed to just memorizing and remembering that when there's a square root of a negative number, you should put an i to get full, full credit in your quiz, in your algebra quiz. So make sure that they know their imaginary numbers, which I'm going to show you in a little while. And of course, the use of technology. So graphing uh, um, web application like Desmos is one of them that I often use to show my students why sometimes the solution of a quadratic equation exists and sometimes it does not exist. And uh, that is what I'm going to share with you in my whiteboard right here. So I have here the imaginary numbers and solutions of quadratic equations. So we have square root of 4 and square root of negative 4. And I always show my students that the re reason why we have square root of 4 equal to 2, it's because when we factor out 4, the factors of 4 is a perfect square, which is 2 times 2. That's why when we simplify it, the square root of 2 is equal, I mean the square root of 4 will equal to 2 because we can group the identical numbers together and we'll have 2 as our answer. However, if I show them square root of 4 or square root of negative 4 and I ask them to give me the factors of negative 4 and they are quick to tell me that it's 2 times negative 2, which now defies the definition of a square root because it needs to be identical, they need to be the same, and they need to be of the same sign. So in this particular case, your square root will not exist, so that means that number does not exist, but in mathematics, we know that we can find a way on how to represent these numbers, and that's when I show them that I can use negative 1 times 2 times 2 and in this case, I'll be able to show them that now I can factor out the square root of neg negative 1 and 
the factors of 2 times 2. Therefore, i times 2 will be our answer, or simply 2i. So this is how I show my students why we have an imaginary number and the process or visual how we produce an i in some square roots. And for the solution of quadratic equations, we know that if we solve for the x, the solution of x squared minus 25 equal to 0 algebraically, so we add 25 on both sides, so that we'll have x squared is equal to 25, and we take the square root of both sides, so x is equal to plus or minus 5. And for the second problem, if we subtract 25 on both sides, so we have x squared is equal to negative 25, and we take the square root of these numbers, we know that the square root of negative 25 does not exist, but we can simplify it as plus or minus 5i. And again, we have several videos that you can use in the description box for examples like this. And then to make it more visual and understandable for my students, that's when I use Desmos or any web application, maybe graphing calculator, to show them why x squared minus 25, its solution does exist, and why x squared plus 25, its solution does not exist. So you, they will see that x squared minus 25, the solution is the point of intersection of the parabola along the x axis, or sometimes I write y equals 0, so that they would understand that y equal to 0 is also the x-axis. And since they intersect at negative 5 and positive 5, we have a solution. Whereas, if I show them x squared plus 25, now they're seeing that the parabola is not crossing our y equal to 0 or the x-axis. That's why the solution of that equation does not exist. So this is one way of visualizing and sharing our students why sometimes our quadratic equations exist and sometimes it does not exist and yet we can still be able to show them in graph form similar to this one. So this is how I share to my students imaginary numbers and complex numbers and making sure that they are understanding every single details in the lesson on quadratic, similar to what I showed you. So simplifying square roots, they need to master their multiplication table. Imaginary numbers, making sure that they understand that this value of i is square root of negative 1, and we can factor it out sometimes just to show what an imaginary number is for the square root of a negative number. And using technology to graph certain quadratics so that they will understand why sometimes we have quadratic equation with solutions and sometimes we have quadratics that don't have any solutions. And that is how I teach quadratic equation, specifically imaginary numbers or uh, solutions of quadratic equation that does not exist so that they will understand better the value of a complex number. So if you have any lessons that you want to share or strategy that you want us to know on how you teach imaginary numbers or complex numbers, comment it down below so that we would know and we'll be able to share it in our next video. And for our students who are watching right now, you can practice some of these problems in our uh, videos in the description box below so you can practice because we know that to be able to understand mathematics better and to be better in mathematics, all we need to do is to practice and be consistent in making sure that we are mastering every single skill that we are learning in mathematics. So this is Dr. E and see you again next time. Bye!